In this video, we're going to focus on part 23 of the point of sale system in JavaScript. And now what we're going to do, we're going to transition into PHP. So first of all, I have saved this file now as a PHP file. Secondly, you'll see I have moved it into a local host. This is very important. You have to make sure you do that first because without a local host or a local server, you cannot continue on. So what we're going to do here now is not really working deeply on PHP, but what I want to explain is the structure or the, the, uh, the data, how we organize that. So to do this, I want you to look at this here. Basically what we're going to do here is three different tables here. Every table contains certain data. So you can see here, this one here is the menu items. And this is basically our item ID, the name, the price, and the image. Right now, of course, you can see here, because I move everything, except I connected the images, not yet. Well, I didn't connect yet the images. That's why it's not showing, and that's eventually what we have to focus on. However, this here is just a default information that we will just always insert ready, because that is, will be our selection. Then what we have is what we call the orders table. The orders table is focused basically on when a customer order. What is very important here is the order ID, and then we have here the order amount, and we have the order customer paid, meaning how much they paid. And then we have here the change, and the order customer, and what I refer to order customer is basically this. When I select here something, I click here and check out, we have here the customer name. So this could be also maybe order customer name, one or the other. And uh, oh, before I continue on that, we have more. We have a discount. I'm not going to work with discount uh, so far or yet because discount requires a different way of working and this can be very tricky. However, we might be having an easy way in doing it in the item itself. However, I will explain it next time on other videos. Then next we have the date and time. This is very important. We need to register the date and time and of course we need to register the cashier ID. So who was the cashier who inserted that? We might be missing something here. I think I might miss here something, but that is all right. We will eventually work on that if ever. What is very important here is then the order slip. The order slip is basically the subset of the orders or the order ID. The order ID, there can be only one order ID or basically one receipt per customer. And then the order, order slip would be, imagine this, the order slip is what we send to the kitchen and the kitchen gets the instructions what to cook or what to make. In this case, we are selling pizzas and drinks. So there will be a order slip for what drinks they have to order, they need to prepare and the pizzas we need to prepare as well. So this is very important. However, this information will basically come from here, but is what I call HC, which is hard coded. And the reason why is this, if the item ID, well, basically this will be always the same. The menu name item could change and the price could change as well. This is a very common thing is if you have a database that someone will eventually adjust the original price here it says well before it was $7.99 now it will be $8.99 and this is very dangerous if you will update this here and this is not hard coded but soft coded soft coded meaning it will be linked to this that even if you have from one year back the information from someone who paid previously was $7.99 and now you update the price to $8.99 that price at the previous receipt is going up as well. And that is incorrect, of course. We don't want this. That's why it's hard coded. So we have the solid numbers here. And once we have that, we also have here the quantity. The quantity is what we need to get. And the quantity is based on eventually here what we have here. So we need the number, the name, and then the quantity, how much we have. With that, we can calculate the total sum as well, which is basically this one here. So this is the whole structure of it. And if you wonder why is this order ID link, and I tend to call it a underscore link, because it's a link or it links directly to this. As I, can, as I uh, said earlier, this one will be only once. This one could have the same ID of that one here multiple times. And that is maybe we have the, because we have to look through this for per item. So if we have four pizzas, pizza one, pizza two, and pizza three, and pizza four, for example, and they order everyone one, it will basically be four loops in here, or four rows in the database. So this is very, very important to understand. 
All right. So now we have that, and then what I want to do here is just to really grab the basics of it. So I'm just going to grab this code here, and I will put this code in the comment section below, so you can just copy that and do that as well, because this is just default code here. And for me, sometimes I get uh, some errors in here, and it's very hard to figure out the errors in here. Anyway, we save this here. Then basically we're done, but of course we need to create the database here. So let's create the database. In the database we will be working on here, I'll create a new database because this is my chart.js series here, but so I'm going to create a new one. And in here I'm just going to call this my point of sale. So this database name will be our point of sale. And then I'm going to create. Once I created this, in the point of sale we can create now our table. And what I really want to do is just follow along here. Menu items. And the menu items are of course all these items that we have here. Uh, let's call this menu items. Am I correct that this was with a capitalized I? There you are. I like to call them uh, with an S. And the reason why is because it's multiple items and every row is a single item. So this is why I use the plural term on the top for the table. So let's go back here. And then here, that will be how many columns? In this case, four items. So one row. We might, I realize, maybe we have to add another one. Because we have a category, I realize here, and what I'm referring to that is the drinks. Probably this will be eventually a separate one. Because right now here, there is no distinguishing uh, item here for drinks. So how would PHP, if we look through that, how would we know one is drinks, one is food? So that's why I realize while well, working on it, we need to add another one. So I'm going to call the other one will be drinks. So all right, let's grab the names here. Menu item ID, which is the first one, menu item ID. And then we have the menu item name, the menu item price, and image. So menu item name, menu item price, and menu item uh, image. And finally here, I will just say here, menu item, I will say this will be the category. And the category could be a string or could be an integer. I would say go for an integer is easier. And uh, what we can do is we can eventually extend that one. But it's up to you. If you prefer to have a text, go for text. But I would go for an integer is easy. And the only thing that we have to consider this, and this is what I was referring to with the promo, uh, with the discount here. We could make a separate tab here eventually for promo items. That would be an option as well as a category. You can select that and there will be a di discounted version of Pizza One, for example. That will be an alternative to work with. Of course, you, as I can show you, can make a mistake by selecting one or the other that is maybe not promoted while you should have the promoted version. But we have to see on that one. Of course, in this case now, th that logic will keep it aside because that is required a lot more uh, force thought. So in here, I'm going to say here, the value will be 1, because it can be a number from 0 up to 9. Menu item uh, will be a string, so you're going to get here, var chart, and here, uh, let's say here, maybe uh, 50 characters. I think that will be more than sufficient. All right, here, we need to have our decimal floating points, and what I want to do here is, uh, depending on which country you are, you might have different numbers, so I'm going to say 5 and Two. All right, so that so it should be no more than ten thousand dollars or ten thousand your currency. Then we have the name here. I guess this should be a far chart as well. Here, menu item. This will be a auto increment. So I'm going to move here. We say A I. There we are. Save this. Oh, uh, that was not what I wanted to do. I oh sorry, that was also not what I want to do. I have to move here. Uh, and I have to move maybe this a little bit up. All right, there we are. Let's just scroll down here and save. That's the one I needed. All right, so now we have these items here. Nothing fancy. I want to create a new one, and the new one will be seen here. Let's say here orders, uh, order ID. Let this. All right, so that will be very. I guess this will should be a very easy item to follow along with. Orders, order ID. Order ID, order amount, order amount, customer, uh, order customer paid, how much is customer paid, order customer paid, 
And then I probably need how many more? We have here four, and then we need four more, and I think even we need another one, but that's all right. I'm going to say here, order change, the amount we need to pay back in change, order change. And the reason I'm recording this, this can be important for you. You might say, well, this doesn't really matter if we have this, but sometimes having this data can be an essential item. Change, order uh, customer, or order customer name is probably a bit more better. That's that one. Order discount. We'll just put it in here, but I want to do anything with this. Then we have here order date and time. I guess this would be order, uh, let's call it order date, and this will be a default date here. I guess that will be date, date, time, I guess current date. Am I correct? It should be here. And this would be a current date stamp. All right, date time stamp, current time stamp. That's the one we need. Another one here. This would be the order cashier ID. Order cashier ID. And this I will just put now as a fixed value defined as one. Assuming that we only have one person who's logging in, that for now. Yes, and this because this here would be based on your login system. When you log in, you register, you get the ID of that cashier. So we have this here. Let's start to work on the final items here. This auto increment. All right, let's move that there. Uh, what am I missing? Do we see it here? No. Oh wait, I'm just moving too far. AI. All right. Auto increment. Order amount. Uh, order amount will be here as well. Decimal. And I'm going to put in here the order amount that that could be as well. Five comma two. Now we have here the customer order, customer paid. Same item here, decimal. I assume here this. In order change, which will really change amount, how much we have to give back in change for the customer. Decimal. Customer order name, bar chart here. And this will eventually be one or the other. And what I mean by that is this. We select this, we go check out, and then we have this here. If we cannot get the name, it will eventually be just the order ID or at least visual if there's nothing in here we just put a blank in there insert blank or just insert the number of the the order number and the order number is basically just the very top here eventually or we have to build something because we don't want to use the official order id for that we just want to have a something so that's why i'm just thinking maybe we need another one for that but that's all right for now so we just put in here i'll just put in 50 characters and we'll see what will happen after this discount discount could be percentage or or in amount so right now I'm just putting here this but we were not going to work on this as I said before now it's default cashier ID all right this here well uh, let's say default five but if we that would mean five items that would mean that we have over 90 uh, uh, 10,000 or nine 99,000 cashiers well that will be more than enough all right once we've done that I'm going to save this got that as well next one here Order slip ID, these two will be linked and I'm going to use it later on with, with PHP connection. So I'm just going to make that one and basically we're done for this. I'm going to create here what is the item order slips. Alright, order slips. And then we have the order slip, there will be the order slip ID. And then we have here the order. Alright, so this is the menu item ID here. We will grab this, insert it there, and then but this will be hard coded, never directly correlated. Because if not, you might say we can just delete these. But no, of course we cannot. So we can just say order slip item. That will be fine here for now. Order slip item. Then here we have the order slip. Uh, let's see what is that? This is the item. Oh, that was the item ID, item name, and item price. Order slip item name item id and order slip item price image is not important for us unless you want to display the image i would say in that case you can grab the image but for me right now if the kitchen gets the recipe just think it like that if the kitchen gets the order slip it is very straightforward you will see here the quantity of specific items and what the items are uh, uh how many there are of each and that will be a basically like that so we're going to grab this and later on we need to combine this to show it full but anyway this will be the price kitchen doesn't need to know the price the only thing what they need to know is eventually let's add one more here do we need another one as well yes we need another one for the order id link so we have two here so here this will be the order slip 
quantity and this will be the order uh, let's see that would be order ID link and the reason I'm using this term here because it's in order steps it will link to the order ID order uh, ID uh, yes that's not order ID underscore link so we got this here this will be well we can say here uh, 10 that doesn't matter order step quantity this is a number here well I can say here how many quantities five is fine should not be more than that amount of the orders and then here order item price well probably I'll just make this here five comma two this will be a decimal order item link bar chart this could be 50 order item ID well five should be more than sufficient there we have all right so we have this here and now will be auto increment we are already there no we are already there you are all right so once we did that we can save this now we have these three items here and that will be sufficient for now next video we're going to start working on to connect them to insert basically orders in here but then we start to really think how does the receipt needs to be shown and then after that we need to also figure out do we have a separate item for the order slips so that kitchen knows what's the order